Haley Wickenizer, thanks for joining me on the show here. No problem. We are in the Hall of Champions, is that what they call this place? We are, yes. And yeah. your training facility here in Calgary? Yes. How long, has this always been the home for Team Canada? Uh, yeah, for other Bowers. As long as you've been yeah, here? Yeah, since 98. Yeah, it's uh, evolved and had changes, but this has been our home for quite a while. And they keep you working pretty hard. You just came off the ice from practice, and yeah. I got here at, what, 10.30 in the morning? Yeah, we've been, we go pretty hard. It's, uh, it's, a busy, it's a busy time, and it's an exciting time with the games not too far away. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, lots to do, and especially with the uh, games in Canada, there's lots of requests. I, I can imagine. I know, I know last year the World Hockey Championship, silver to the U.S., so close. Yeah. Why is it always, can for women's hockey especially, and, and now men's yeah. hockey as well, Canada and the U.S. is never the European countries anymore that are... Well, it's not necessarily true. I mean, if you look at Sweden in 06, they upset the U.S. to, oh, uh, you know, in the semifinal. But, but you're right, it has been Canada and the U.S. back and forth. I think we're, uh, you know, we have such a great rivalry in women's hockey mm -hmm. with each other. And everybody, when they see women's hockey or they think about it, they think Canada and the U.S., but... I would say we are the top two countries in the world, and uh, Sweden and Finland right there as well. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to be an exciting tournament in Vancouver mm. and uh, makes for entertaining hockey. How do you take what happened uh, in 09 and beat the U.S. this time around? Well, we learned a lot. We hadn't played well in the last two world championships and final games, but um, I think as a team this year being centralized, playing 50 games, and um, day in and day out, the little uh, habits that we have, um, have really helped us uh, become a better team and a better group and, and that's uh, what we draw on I think knowing that we have um, great preparation and uh, um, we have a team that can win for sure. Right. I know you coached a clinic with Gretzky in the fall here. Um, I, I'm, I assume you've met him before and talked to him what not being in the hockey world for a long time but watching him coach and, and train kids, did that teach you anything in the process? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well for sure. I mean Wayne is just uh, the presence the presence that he is um, is probably the biggest thing, you know, when he walks into a room, um, the way that, uh, you know, people look to him and mm -hmm. young kids, even to this day, even though it's not really their generation, look up to him. Uh, you know, he's the ultimate uh, Canadian hockey icon. And, uh, You're you know, getting more, there too, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a long way to go. But, uh, you know, more, more just uh, his presence, you know, what, I, what I've learned from Wayne is just in talking to him, his love for the game. and. Uh, his memory is so good. He can go back years past and he remembers exactly what happened in mm -hmm. which game. And, um, you know, he's got a great mind and studies it. And I think um, it's what made him such a good player. And, uh, you know, he still loves the game even to this day. I think even though he's not in it, but he'll find a, another way to come back into it. Yeah. I know you got a little boy. Has he shown any interest into to hockey? And okay. are you going to coach one day? Do you think parents should coach their own kids? You know, I, I uh, love working with young kids probably more than anything. Uh, my son doesn't play hockey. Mm -hmm. he, does, he doesn't like hockey. It means mom and dad are always gone, and uh, oh, it's a bad association for him. But uh, uh, I bring him to the rink sometimes, and he likes to bring a good book and read. So <laughs> He's a studious little one. <laughs> He's That's a studious nice. guy. But, uh, you know, yeah, I don't think there's any problem with parents coaching their kids. I, I think it's just important to uh, remember their their kid and not to put too much pressure on your own child but or to be too hard on them mm -hmm. and it's hard when you I think you coach your own your own uh, child but as a kid my dad coached me for many years and it worked out fine um, and I think just the main thing for kids in hockey these days is to keep the skill development and the enjoyment of the game at the top priority um, too many focus on the, the NHL or the draft mm -hmm. the Bantam draft or this or that which um, I think in Canada we sometimes lose sight of but other than that, yeah, no problem. Just have fun. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Finland and Sweden being great teams. You, you've played in both those leagues out there. Yeah. And I heard you went to the Flyers rookie camp a while ago, too. Do you think there's going to be a day where women play in the NHL? No, I don't. I, uh, you know, I've played at a high enough level in the men's game to know that, uh, you know, I'll play 82 games in the NHL and the grind day in and day out. It's pretty physically diff difficult, challenging. Um, I, I think what I see for women's hockey is uh, sort of an NHL of our own, mm -hmm. a women's professional hockey league. Uh, which would be a great thing for women's hockey one day. And uh, that's really where we're, we're moving to next in the game. And hopefully coming out of the 2010 games, we get uh, increased exposure and interest mm -hmm. and development around the world and the best players in the world playing in the best league. Right. Are there enough little girls playing to, to substantiate a full league? You know, I think we're, we're close. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to do that, you've got to, I think you need the support of the NHL and uh, you need to have the best players in the world playing in that league and probably four to six teams to start. And uh, you play in sort of medium-sized arenas and draw decent crowds. Um, 
pay modest to decent salaries <laughs> and, and you grow from there. But it has to be done right the first time. And mm -hmm. um, I think we're, you know, you can learn from the WNBA, you can learn from the other leagues. And, and you know, we're close to that. Is there a day where there's going to be hitting in the women's leagues? Do you, do you wish yeah. there were? Well, it's a, it's a good question. I think it's a really good debate now because I think it would make the game easier to ref. Mm -hmm. uh, it may eliminate some of the stick work, uh, but at the same time, you want to encourage skill development mm -hmm. and encourage young girls to play hockey. And if it would hurt the game, then we, we couldn't have that, I think, at this point. But I'd like to see it in you know, international hockey at our level. I think it would make it a much easier game to play. And uh, you know, I think it could be entertaining, too. Yeah, oh, well, for sure. Well, people <laughs> love watching them. Well, maybe not so much the fighting, but, no. but at least the hitting. Yeah, you can have contact without fighting. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, that's a much, much different. Those are. Well, that's World Junior things, cha Championship you know. level, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, just good, clean hitting and uh, just makes, it, I think, the game almost easier to ref and play. Mm -hmm. You're one of the, the few Olympians that have played both summer and winter. I know we've got a cross-country skier now who's Paralympic and the Olympic Games. Yeah. But is there anyone else that you know of that has done both? Uh, well, yeah. My, uh, my good friend Claire Hughes uh, is a cyclist and a speed skater oh, and okay. as an individual athlete, but I think I'm the only team sport athlete that's competed in both games. But there's been a variety of uh, Canadian athletes, male and female, that uh, have done both games mostly in individual sports. So. Do you want to play softball again? Um, or was that no, just a one-time uh, kind of, I'll do this for fun kind of thing? You know, I, I played it uh, from when I was a kid and uh, right up until the 2000 games and then uh, sort of retired, if you want to say, after that. Just mainly because I didn't have the time with hockey and with my son, who was mm. just born in, in 2000. So. Um, yeah, I love the game and I play it all the time. I did commentary for CBC in Beijing mm -hmm. and I was around the team and I got the itch to play again for sure, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just too time consuming right now. Well, especially with the games just around the corner. Yeah, for sure. Tell us about your experience in Rwanda for Right to Play. Yeah, you know, I love Right to Play. It's a great organization and I think they've done amazing things and uh, for children around the world, uh, developing and helping kids rebuild their lives through sport and play. So I went to Rwanda and uh, with Jennifer Heil and uh, Christina Groves and Arnie Dankers, and we spent 10 days uh, touring orphanages and uh, children's schools and um, different areas of, of the country and learning and watching the Right to Play programs in action and seeing how firsthand they actually help kids mm -hmm. rebuild their lives. So when you look at some country like Haiti right now and what they're going through there, Right to Play is an organization who would come in in the very near future and you know some of those orphans and kids that are left behind and and really work with them to help them find some joy and and hope and um, it's one of the greatest organizations I've been around and you know the athletes that you get a chance to work with are just in it for the right reasons so I really enjoy it. Who did you idolize as a kid growing up? Was it women's hockey players or was it, was it more the guys? Yeah, no I didn't have any female I didn't know women played hockey till I was mm. like 12 years old oh. I watched the world championships in 1990 uh, but I looked up to, to Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier, you know, two of the guys that uh, today I have an opportunity to talk to about hockey on an informal basis. So it's just amazing how life comes full circle mm -hmm. and you idolize these guys, watch them on Hockey Night in Canada, and uh, you know, you're around them at different events. Cool. Well, Haley Wickenheiser, okay. thank you very much. Thanks, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you.